Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 14th. This first story is from my buddy Stitch Shifter, who used to be a regular part of the TDD Report back years ago when it started. That was about uh, seven or eight years ago, and uh, still a semi-regular contributor, and a, a very good businessman to help me rebuild my motorcycle seat. So if you need somebody to rebuild your motorcycle seat, I would suggest using them. Links will be below in the description. Um, these two brothers, they're let me see if I don't slaughter these names. Leonid and Sergei Plekhanov, fans of Nikola Tesla, which I am too. I think most geeks are fans of Nikola Tesla. Um, had more brains in his little finger than I think Thomas Edison had in his whole body. They're going to attempt to rebuild a prototype of his Wardenclyffe Tower, the one in Long Island that Tesla had, that he said if he could set up the right resonance on the tower and get it working correctly, he never had a chance to finalize it, but he said he could transmit power to the world and uh, the distribution system would be almost practically free when you divided it up uh, with the amount of uh, power it could transmit to uh, all the different directions and stuff like that. I mean, it eliminates the need for cables, eliminates the need for any other way to do it. Um, it's not an energy creation source, it's an energy transportation source. So you still have to have some point where you create the energy. And these two brothers are thinking about the fact, although I don't think this uh, full-size prototype that they're going to build, I don't think it's going to be somewhere in the desert. They're talking about after the experimental prototype that that would be the best idea for it would be to be in a desert where there was a bunch of solar panels. Um, you could take some of the desert areas of the southwest of the United States and produce enough power to power the United States with even more left over. And then using a Tesla coil type of device, if this succeeds, uh, would be the way to transmit the power. Now, the Indiegogo campaign is asking for $800,000. It's been going on for 13 days, but so far they've only ra raised $2,400, and it ends on July 25th. Now, they raised in the past $40,000 to do a small-scale prototype, and they were satisfied enough with that, so maybe if they do raise enough money with this, although it doesn't look really promising at present, but uh, it would be nice if they could try something like that. I mean, I've always been a fan of Tesla, and I think some of his ideas are still... Um, way ahead of the time even for nowadays so hopefully they will succeed this next one is from IT world the US government has lifted a long-standing restriction that meant companies like Google and Microsoft couldn't access the most accurate pictures taken by imaging satellites I guess right now they've got a limit that you cannot publish any kind of pictures or even sell if you're a satellite imaging company you cannot even sell pictures that have a resolution um, any better than about 50 centimeters, which is about just under two, two feet, something like that. But I guess now that it is uh, the restriction is limited, there's a satellite going up that's going to be able to produce images that are down to about maybe 30, 31 centimeters, which is about one foot of resolution. So um, they think the fact that you know Google and um, what you call it, Google and uh, Nokia, I'll, I'll read the whole thing here. Google and Nokia automatically process such images to help build accurate online maps, and there's a host of uses outside of the Internet industry, including agriculture, disaster relief, mining, transportation, and civil engineering. This announcement came in the same week that Google said it would buy satellite imaging startup Skybox Imaging for $500 million. So kind of just like they did with the uh, GPS system. They uh, used to have restrictions on the GPS system to make it a lot less accurate because they didn't want um, enemy troops getting their hands on it and stuff like that, but they decided just to lift it um, in this case too. And I'm guessing too, what's what's the use at this point anyway? I mean, if uh, if an enemy wants detailed information, they've got even, they can zoom into Google Street View. You can go into a Google uh, Maps and look at the Street View and get um, you know, images on Google Street View that are way better resolution than even 30 centimeters. So if somebody really wants really accurate images, that um, would not be a real problem. But uh, yeah, so no more restriction. Now, this I do not know if this means that an individual could actually call up one of these companies and buy one of these images. This may be still something that's only open to corporations, so uh, don't get your hopes up. And I know the ones that are for sale are not at a cheap price. I think you're talking a couple hundred bucks just to even get the... Uh, cheapest of the cheap uh, single image from some of these places back when I talked about it before. So um, You'll have to look to Google Maps or uh, maybe Microsoft Bing or something like that in the future to actually see these images unless you got a real uh, big huge pocket full of cash. This last one's from 1954 Shadow. 
This is from NewScientist.com. Massive ocean discovered in the Earth's core. Now we're not talking about aquifers like when you drill down 200 uh, feet or so to go into a well or something like that. We're talking about 700 kilometers below the surface. So we're talking about way, way down into the Earth's crust. I mean almost the limits of it before you reach the uh, just the liquid part. But uh, they're saying that uh, the layer of rock between Earth's surface and its core, the huge size of the reservoir, throws new light on the origins of Earth's water. Some geologists think water arrived in comets as it struck the planet, but this new discovery supports an alternative idea that the oceans gradually used out of the interior of the Earth. And uh, that is one of the reasons, too, why they think that maybe um, this may be a better idea for how the oceans got most of their water than the fact of just cometary bombardment because the oceans stayed basically kind of at the same size. And so if all of this water for some reason were to come up to the surface, all there would be left on Earth were just the mountaintops. So for some reason, I guess there's a, this causes some kind of a balance between the water below and the water above. Uh, I don't know everything in detail about this because I didn't get a chance to really um, look at any scientific papers about it or anything like that. But it's interesting because they use seismic waves going through um, when you have earthquakes and stuff like that. Yes, it produces seismic waves and you can actually, by reading these waves, you can tell whether it's going through dry rock or wet rock. And uh, after the scientists looked at the seismic waves from over 200 different uh, earthquakes, he also, on, in, a, in a laboratory, actually reproduced some of these conditions too of the temperatures and pressure in rocks and got very similar readings. So he's thinking these seismic waves are, are pretty accurate in detecting the fact that there is uh, water locked in between the granules of these uh, rock particles about 700 kilometers down. So. Uh, if you get a chance to check that out, as usual, all the links will be down below. Now, let me talk about the next three weeks. I will be on the road. I'm going to be leaving out on Tuesday, headed towards the east. I will be visiting with a lot of friends, including uh, first stop will be at Muzzle Mike's place. And I think we may do a combined TDD and in the lawn report with him. But for the next three weeks, it's going to be very sporadic. No guarantee if I'm going to get a report out every week and no guarantee if it's going to be exactly on the same time schedule as I usually post on Sundays sometime around noontime or so, but I'll try my best. I think I will be with some resources and with some people that are pretty smart, pretty geeky. I will be uh, stopping at Papa Bear my Kaylee's place, so if I get the chance, I'm going to try to keep up the schedule and do at least three reports. Maybe not on the same schedule, but uh, no guarantees, but I will do my best. So I want you to take care, everybody, and I will catch you maybe next week.